Hello friends and welcome to this video. We are with the seventh chapter which is titled as Wavelet Transform for the subject Advanced Digital Signal Processing. So for understanding the wavelet theory right from the origins of wavelets and its journey as a mathematical tool to address various signal processing applications we have in this particular chapter. We have also covered the Fourier series as a tool from the earlier popular family addressing the signal processing applications and this was made from geometrical point of view and now with the introduction to the Haar wavelet to be the most simplest from the family of wavelets we have this study continued here. In the previous videos here first of all we had a focus on Haar scaling function the corresponding scaling and translation operations to obtain the base elements which satisfy the orthogonality and the orthonormality criteria we have tried to have representation of certain examples of the signals with the help of the Haar scaling functions now it's time to introduce the another one i have already talked about it that it is Haar wavelet function for which also we can make the scales and the translates here let us see what exactly the Haar wavelet function is and thereupon onwards we shall see the use of it for representation of the signal and other things. So let us begin with the topic. So here we start with our topic, the topic titled Haar wavelet function. So as of now from the previous 4 to 5 videos I hope you are well familiar with the Haar scaling function. I recall back the representation of the Haar scaling function. See the Haar scaling function is denoted by phi of t. Here it is the mathematical representation of the same phi of t. Opting the value of amplitude equal to 1 or the time interval 0 to 1. Otherwise the amplitude label goes to 0. Here it is the graphical representation. So we have phi of t on the vertical axis where the marked amplitude label is equal to 1 and this is valid true for the space on the time interval 0 to 1. For rest of the space we have it equal to 0. So this was the scaling function. Now in addition to this Haar scaling function now in this video we will like to have introduction to Haar wavelet function which is different than this. So on comparison let us see how it is. See the notation to denote the Haar wavelet function for scaling function it was phi of t. For wavelet function it is psi of t. Phi, psi both are the Greek symbols. So they have been used for this representation of correspondingly Haar scaling function and now Haar wavelet function this is what the difference and now you see for the time interval that it was 0 to 1 where the constant amplitude level 1 it was for the scaling function for that interval we have two parts as we discuss about the Haar wavelet function see we have to go for 0 to 0 0.5 it means 1 by 2 and from 1 by 2 onwards up to 1. So for 0 to 1 by 2 we have the amplitude level as like the Haar scaling function equal to positive 1. But for the next half interval that is from 0 0.5 or either you can call 1 by 2 onwards up to 1 we have it equal to minus 1 negative 1 here elsewhere is equal to 0. So graphical illustration here you see psi of t on the vertical axis we have the 0 marking where we have the intersection of the vertical axis with the horizontal where there are the markings of time intervals on the horizontal axis this is time axis so for 0 to 1 by 2 we have the amplitude level equal to 1 and for 1 by 2 to 1 on the time axis we have the amplitude level equal to minus 1 so this is what exactly the Haar wavelet function now let us discuss few of the additional information with respect to this Haar wavelet function. Now for making the use of Haar scaling function for the functional representations of the various types here. 
Thereupon we have checked the orthogonality condition and further the orthonormality condition. So for checking the orthogonality condition, there should not be any kind of overlapping with the translated functional basis here. Of course, we have not made the translations here. And for orthonormality, the area under that particular graphical curve should be equal to unity. So from the visualization of the Haar wavelet function here, it is quite clear to see that the set of functions in general, if you make by translation, psi of t minus k, as we have made for the scaling function, where k is belonging to the integer scale. So it will form an orthonormal set of basis functions. So as like the Haar scaling function, we check that there it will not be any kind of overlapping between the translates of this Haar wavelet function psi of t. So therefore the orthogonality and orthonormality both will be checked here. So you see here it is on the vertical axis the amplitude markings minus 1 then plus 1 here and the 0 marking. So the original Haar wavelet function here it is represented for the time span 0 to 1. So for half duration we have plus 1 and for rest of the half we have minus 1 amplitude. Now when we have translation by 1 unit on the right hand side we can denote it as psi of t minus 1. So psi of t minus 1 the same pattern we redraw here for the duration 1 to 2 here. So after 1.5 we have to switch it from positive 1 to the negative 1 here. Same if it is represented for the time duration between 2 to 3 we get it denoted by psi of t minus 2 here. So these are the translated versions of the Haar wavelet function here. Now let us first of all check the orthogonality here. So mathematically to check the orthogonality, the integral of the function and corresponding translated version, if it is equal to 0, we come to see that both the elements, those involved into this multiplication and further integration over the entire time range are the orthogonal basis we can see here. So here you see psi of t, the original R wavelet function which is multiplied to psi of t minus 1 where it is the translated version of the Haar wavelet function by one unit that is why t minus 1 here. So this is for the interval 1 to 2 as you see in the previous illustration and this is the Haar wavelet function having the amplitude changes from plus 1 to minus 1 for the interval 0 to 1 here. The multiplication of the two if you see so that time we get that equal to 0 and upon the integration to the complete range minus infinity to infinity we get it equal to 0 here. So now you see orthogonality is checked and in general if we try to have orthogonality as well as the orthonormality also checked the mathematical expression we can represent as the integral from minus infinity to infinity for psi of t minus m in general into psi of t minus n dt we can denote it equal to del suffix m minus n. So del is the representation of the impulse and here we have in the suffix m minus n here. So this is the expression that will check the orthogonality as well as the orthonormality for this case. So if you see m is equal to n this integration will give you the value 1 here. So we see that uh, let us have the mathematical representation for m is equal to n. This will give us if you substitute it like this. So psi of t into psi of t and this multiplication is integrated over minus infinity to infinity and this will be of course equal to 1 here. So graphically we shall illustrate it with the help of the illustration here you see. So we have one psi of t as shown earlier we have defined in this video and then again psi of t 
and the multiplication of the two psi of t into psi of t we get psi square of t here whatever the negative parts here you see minus 1 into minus 1 it will be equal to plus 1 so for this much of interval also it will be equal to plus 1 here and after integration it is of course equal to 1 here now as for the Haar scaling function by using the original Haar scaling function and its corresponding translated versions on the positive as well as negative axis of the time as a parameter here we defined the functional spaces here you recall back the functional space it was first of all v0 then for obtaining finer resolutions we have reductions into the time intervals of the functional basis here so thereupon we had v1 v2 v3 v minus 1 v minus 2 this way in general we have vj as the functional space defined for the scaling function of the Haar wavelet now for the Haar wavelet function also we can define a functional space let us say it is defined to be capital w0 here w suffix 0 so this is the space spanned by the orthonormal sets of the basis in general psi of t minus k where k will belong to the integer n here so mathematically we shall describe this w0 functional space for the Haar wavelet function like this so we have w0 spanning for the k so we have psi of t minus k in general now for example if we have a signal as represented in the accompanying illustration here there it will be a question how to have representation of such a signal by the functional basis which are the elements of the functional space defined w0 which is formed by the original Haar wavelet function and its corresponding translated versions here so you see if you observe this particular signal you see first of all for 0 to 0 0.5 it means for 1 by 2 we have the amplitude level equal to 3 then we have minus 3 for the equal interval here so next to that from 1 to 1.5 we have 2 next to that we have minus 2 then onwards we have minus 2.5 plus 2.5 then we have 1 minus 1 so if you match the structure here like this so this is like the original Haar wavelet function that has been shifted on the time axis here so this way we can have it to be the original translated version and if you multiply it with certain scaling factor or let us say scalar here so we obtain the earlier structures also so let us have a representation of the example signal that is shown with the help of the solid line in this illustration to be denoted by the functional basis which are part of the functional space defined capital w0 here so we denoted the signal as f of t and let us say it is equal to 3 times psi of t psi of t is the original Haar wavelet function further added by 2 times psi of t minus 1 minus 2.5 times psi of t minus 2 and lastly added by psi of t minus 3 here so this way whenever there it is such a pattern that we have for the half of the duration the amplitude level into the positive and into the next half the amplitude of the same level but into the negative direction here that time we can make the use of the functional basis from the functional space defined w0 that is developed from the Haar wavelet function here so the functional representation is quite possible the example we have discussed here so this was the topic to introduce you the Haar wavelet function so as like for getting more and more finer resolution Haar scaling versions for Haar wavelet function also we can do it so let us have the next topic to be scaled Haar wavelet functions into the 
सेम चैप्टर थैंक यू